Hello, hello everyone and welcome, welcome, welcome. Today we have something very, very special for you. Today we're going to be talking about game writing and game narrative design. Now this is a topic which a lot of you have pinged me uh, asking about saying, Rahul, I want to be a game story writer. I want to write these epic games. I want to write narrative. I want to be a writer. I want to write beautiful stories and characters and bring worlds to life. And today, is this is going to be about that. So today, we have with us Harish. Harish Chengaye, who is a good friend of mine and who is the CEO of Outlier Games. So tell us about yourself, Harish. Yeah, thanks for the introduction, Rahul, and uh, hi to everyone at Gamer to Maker and everyone else who follow Rahul. So I'm an indie game dev. Uh, I have I happen to have a studio by the name of Outlier Games, as Rahul mentioned. Uh, we tend to make very narrative-driven games in Outlier Games. In fact, we are working on our first game called Deliverance. So I'm a designer writer myself at Outlier Games, and yeah, that's pretty much a quick intro about me. Making right. narrative heavy action adventure games. Awesome. All right. So tell us about your absolutely favorite video game when it comes to story and narrative, please. Interesting story. And there, there are too many picks, by the way. But, you gotta pick uh, one. One, uh, Spec Ops the Line. Okay. Tell us a little bit about it. Sure. So Spec Ops the Line, for those who are not uh, familiar with it, it's a third person shooter game. Uh, so it released in 2014 or something. So that one game goes against the grain when it comes to shooting games. It directly talks about violence and it, it, it doesn't try to glamorize it. I mean, the game tries to glamorize it, but it flips the script. And then you're left wondering, what did I just do? So the narrative is like very, very intense. It grips you and it makes you think about very difficult, uncomfortable things. And that's what a game can do, right? If you're watching a movie, you're just watching a movie. But in a game, you're doing it yourself. Right. And Spec Ops the line bridges that gap very wonderfully. It right. makes you question because you're the ones who, who did those things. Right. Why didn't you just drop the controller? Why didn't yeah. you just exit the game? Why did yeah. you have to do that? What is yeah. wrong with you? Are you a bad yeah. person? <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. No, I, absolutely. That's fine. So I, I'll put a link uh, down in the description. Uh, for that game as well. So okay. now there's a lot of confusion um, about what exactly story is. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about what exactly is game story and what mm -hmm. is game narrative and what's the difference sure. between the two? Sure. Um, so I'll give context first. So we have three types of narrative uh, going around in the creative industry. We call it third person, second person, first person narrative, right? Third person is a novel. You have a book, you have a narrator, and then you have a reader, you being the third person. Movie is second person because you're watching something happening like. And video games, we are in the story or the narrative itself. So therein, the entire grammar and the way we approach stories is vastly different, the way we treat it. That's why adaptations are very hard between one and the other in terms of uh, the mediums of storytelling. So with regards to your question as to how a story is different from narrative, think of it like this. Story is what you think of when you hear the term story. And narrative is like a vehicle in which that story is delivered. That is like the simplest way in which I could put it. Like when we talk about cin uh, cinema, it is cinematography, the way edit editing is done, the way actors act something out. And in games, it can take many shapes and forms like quest design, uh, tonal design, gameplay design, so on and so forth, level design, for example. Right. So for example, story would be, um, you know, Arjun was born and then Arjun went to school and then Arjun... Uh, one day Arjun's yes. father was murdered by the bad guys and then Arjun joined the army and then Arjun became a hero and he got married and then yeah. this happened. But narrative yes. could be Arjun is fighting a war. Yeah. And then you and then first they show uh, him fighting a war and then yes. at some point they'll reveal the backstory 
you know, yeah. then they'll jump to when he was being born and then they'll actually reveal about his father being murdered. So narrative, would it be right to say that narrative is not necessarily chronologically uh, the same as story? So it's how you reveal it, what you yeah. choose to say first, what you what you choose to hide from the viewer is as important as what you choose to to show. So yeah. Would that in be fact, it's, it's yeah, it is actually. Uh, but the terminology is a bit fluid because in game industry there are no definitions, as you know. Right. So a, a quick history lesson about it: when gaming, when story-driven games started out in the West, long before gaming was a thing in India, there was a requirement for narrative designer. The reason being, nobody knew how to write stories for games. So what they used to do is hire film writers, TV writers, novel writers, who would make a script, a screenplay, and then hand it over to the game design team. And they would go over that script, which is written in the format that they know, the writers know. Mm -hmm. And the game designers will come on to kind of like make some changes to fit the medium of gaming. So that was preliminarily what was known as narrative designer, because there has to be a role like that. Right. And today, the lines are getting too blurred, because we have people in-house, game designers, who know to write game stories themselves, game script themselves. So the differentiation now is like very blurred because the same person, they don't write a story like a script as a movie script or a game. Right. They, they, it's written specifically the, okay, for the specifically game. For games. So these days, the definition of what a narrative designer does is a bit more different. And it, to be honest, it changes from studio to studio. Right, right. So who, who do you think right now in the current scenario internationally is really rocking it when it comes to game story writing and narrative? Do you have any names? Uh, yeah, I mean, most of these very beautiful narrative game tends to come from USA. Mm -hmm. uh, like any game you point out, chances are it's from USA. There are some examples coming from Germany or France, but the vast majority of them come from USA, Right, especially right. the Bay, San Francisco Bay Area. <laughs> Right, right. Any particular studio who you think is really rocking it? Naughty Dog. Naughty Santa Dog. Monica, <laughs> right, right, Santa right. Monica. Rockstar. <laughs> uh, yeah, Rockstar, you could say. And then Rocksteady, the ones who were behind Batman Arkham series. Right. Like For me, like when it comes to story narrative, Max Payne 1 and 2 are the gold standard. Oh, yeah. Agreed. 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 Right. It's just so good. It's it's one, one of the few games I've watched and it's like I cried. You know, I got super yeah. emotional actually yeah. watching. They really affected me. So for me, Max Payne is always going to be uh, the gold standard when it comes to game writing. Maybe right. in India, I could provide two examples, which uh, Celeste is one example from 2018 and uh, Hellblade from 2017. From indie, if I could quickly recollect story, story narrative-driven games that knocked it out of the park, these two games, I would say. Yeah. Right. Awesome. Awesome. So next, I want to ask you to so tell me, Okay, it's great to you know play video games, great narrative. But if you want to be a, a story writer or a writer for video games or a narrative designer, what's the scope like? Talking about India to start with and the rest of the world, like what's the scope if you want to actually be uh, a story or narrative designer? Sure, uh, I don't want to beat around the bush here. So the thing is, we don't have requirement for narrative designers in India, specifically narrative designer. What we want is a game designer who can handle narrative design. Right. That's the scenario because typically frag fragmentation of work role happens when you have like 100, 200 people employed in a studio. And in India, we hardly have any such studios. Right. There in, are few... in India, it's, it's difficult to actually, I mean, now people are actually hiring game designers, right? There was a point they would be like, ha, game designer, why do I need to pay money for a game designer? Hey. Yeah. You can do, no? You they call you. Yeah. You can do game design, no? Hey, what they they just sit there in their chatty yeah. all day, just playing video yeah. games anyway. What game designer? You do the job. Like that yeah. was the attitude. Now they're like, okay, wow, we need game designers. That is exactly what I was about to touch. I see this difference, especially since the lockdown era. Like from that point, the the demand for game designers shot up in India. I know, right? Like there was demand before, but it was more like even when they hired game designer, they were like, can you also handle art? Can you also hand programming? But from lockdown era onwards, they started understanding, okay, this is like a serious discipline which is needed. So what I'm trying to say is 
now that they know game design is entirely its own pillar of game development and you don't necessarily have to know art or programming to become a game it's 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 good to know that but you're no longer required to know that also in a similar right. way i would say give it 3 to 5 years and we may end up seeing down the line specific narrative design roles also i know right i know right yeah. i know right yeah. so, so so basically switching right now is that if you want to be a narrative designer be a game designer first yes. and then have this specialization for narrative design so that like wherever you're working for even if you're making games for yourself or working for a game yeah. studio you could actually implement even if it's a little bit it be able to implement a strong a strong storyline and a powerful narrative even if it's yeah. small even if it's a tiny bit even if it's like one random cut scene in the middle of loading levels make it good right exactly. and then tomorrow who knows right you do that well you could you know be can be get a call from naughty dog right <laughs> like i'll burst a bubble over here like uh, i mean even i came from that point like everybody uh, thinks they are good with coming up with story ideas the truth is there's a lot more nuance to it mm-hmm. like it's not just a random idea that we come up with right so obviously being a good game designer will be like the like unquestionable requirement to be good with narrative design so we have to be a game designer first and then make a way into narrative design script writing and stuff like that right for games in specific right and spoiler alert by the way harish is actually guys harish is actually taking a master class on narrative design game writing but a little bit about that later okay so now the question i want to ask you is for people watching if you want to learn this like mm-hmm. if you want to learn to be a game writer and a narrative designer of video games how do you do that sure so i was a self learned practitioner of game design and narrative design and in fact most of the studio founders in india are that but uh if to answer your question what i would say is uh start deconstructing games as in it's a very scientific process when we say deconstructing it doesn't mean just play the game and guess what just happened what i mean by that is either have your laptop or a notepad open notebook open next to you every 5 minute or every x minute whenever you learn something or you think you understand something going on behind the scene you make an observation of it and then you would start seeing patterns you do it for every game and you would start seeing a pattern of how things are being built right so i used to do that i i obsessively used to play narrative games like spec ops was one example which i uh, stated earlier in the video uh so like that you will start seeing ways in which narratives are being built for games you would see you would start seeing cliches i don't mean it in a negative way cliche is like a widely used technique right you would start seeing cliches and how things are being built and right. that would be like a good segue point and then comes the uh, like uh, as i told game design right so what we need to understand is game design is an umbrella term right mm-hmm. there are like 8 to 12 disciplines under game design narrative design being one among them right but narrative as i said it's a vehicle on which we deliver the story right right so the ingredients are very simple there is something called tonal design mm-hmm. quest design level design gameplay design and technical design Right. So these five come together to facilitate the delivery of the story. Okay. Right. So that is right. how narrative designers work. So we need to get a grasp over these concepts. Right. Right. Okay. Awesome. And so uh, these are topics that you're actually going to be covering in the master class. Definitely. Right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Definitely. Awesome. Fantastic stuff. So can you repeat those once again, please? Sure. Sure. So. so so this is how it is structured right so when we want to learn uh, narrative design we don't start with narrative design we mm-hmm. start with story writing game writing we start with first of all see this is the thing so the the thing about storytelling is we can only tell good stories once we understand who we are right like what what is our see, what differentiates one style from another style is your unique point of view right right you like you could give them the script for i don't know avengers infinity war to three different directors all three will handle it in a very different way right so i would if i if it's up to me to teach what i would do in my master classes i'll first help people to understand what is their point of view 
who they are so that they are aware of their own biases or their own method of working their style of working and then i will introduce them the concepts of writing and story ideation the the right way of doing it right and once they get a grasp over what story ideation is what story writing is with that context i would then move into narrative design right right wherein wherein i'll first give them the uh, overview of what tonal design is tonal design is nothing but uh, every story you pick up has a particular emotional state to it right, right. or you, a comedy you actually have a google sheet yes i do why don't you share that okay let me screen share that sure so let me start so this is the kind of syllabus that i prepared for uh, game writing and narrative design right so as i told before we start with the foundation wherein we try to first understand the medium of storytelling what has been the relevance of storytelling to humanity the history and its evolution so that we know where the tradition comes from how it evolved history always helps us understand what we need to do and how to do our role better right. so you may think history is boring but it is very necessary and then i would break down the three mediums of storytelling which is books movies and games and then we will go into understanding oneself and this will be the most crucial aspect because it will help you know who you are as a storyteller who you are as a creator right once we have that we would go into introductory phase of storytelling very basic stuff like what is an anatomy of a story and what are the general guidelines of writing a story that works and this is the place where we will be discussing a lot of general rules guidelines and tips on how to ideate and write stories that work right at the end stories are a mix of dark magic and science mm-hmm. there is a science which helps you come up with a framework that works right so we'll be discussing a bit of that science over here right so that you have the foundation covered and the dark magic is pretty much up to your point of view your interpretation but there has to be a basis of the science right so discuss those guidelines and then i would establish how a structure or a format of a script is mm-hmm. like i don't have seen a, a movie screenplay likewise there is a script format for video games also like how are we supposed to write it in a in a in a document so i will tell you how to exactly come up with a script like that because that helps you massively in terms of organizing your ideas right you know how it would go on to a paper once that is done i would then break down the challenges involved specifically in game writing because uh, the nuances is now there is an uh, element of interaction mm-hmm. what are the challenges posed by interaction and how to overcome those right and then i would just give a general outlook as to what is the demand in india and abroad for game writers right so that's su- super important right yes that is very important so with this we would complete game writing and this this would kind of set the stage for you to learn about game narrative so that is when i would then go with the introduction of game narrative right so i will break down about uh, first and foremost who narrative designers are what is the role what is the kind of pay demand etc and then i would break down the main aspects of narrative design we generally tend to call it engagement immersion and tension i will tell what those are in depth later but once we uh, kind of break down those three pillars of narrative design there is then another thing called the five pronged approach to narrative design which is as i said earlier quest level gameplay technical and tonal design so how does these five sub disciplines of game design come together to to form this five pronged approach to deliver narrative design so these things put together will give you like a fair bit of introduction as to what the world of narrative design is about so then from that point onwards we can get into the real meat of the subject which is the technical deep dive so the first what i would do is set up a deep dive of tonal design so why we start with tonal design is very simple a story will work only when the tone works what i mean by the tone is how you are supposed to feel when you are experiencing a story what emotional state you need to be in right because right. that th- that will decide how your characters talk interact behave how the story should pace right so i will tell you how to establish a tonal design for the game with a ex- with a, with the help of a tool very simple process called emotion charts and intensity charts so once with the help of these two charts 
we will establish what the tonal design is this we will set up so what i mentioned over here is the emotion charts and intensity chart we will be setting it for every level in the game wow okay. so that there is context for every single level how it's supposed to go as far as intensity and emotion is concerned right so with that context of uh, tonality what we will then do is go into the quest or the mission structure so this is where you will break down your return story into workable game game missions or objectives right so there we use very simple tools like quests loops and then cyclical four act structure these are just some terminologies i'm throwing at you at the moment right but what what it basically means is how can we take a story and form a playable objective or a mission structure right what are the rules to make it so that players are engaged players are immersed into it so that okay. they don't get bored because what happens most of the time is we use this term called grinding right in a game mm -hmm. what many people don't realize is grinding is a state of mind it is not a repetition of a mechanic over and over because at its core games mecha game mechanics are a repetition no matter which game we take right right so grinding is a state of mind and how do we make the players not realize they are grinding Right. So quest design kind of plays a lot of role in that. And then we get into level design. So level design I think in Game of Thrones you have extensively covered it, right? It's not this yep. centric thing. It's, yep, yep. It's how do we present an emotion? How do we present a story? Right. So over here I will break how we use level design to tell story. In movies they call it mise-en-scene which basically means in visual storytelling. Mm -hmm. So, with level design principles, I'll be breaking down concepts uh, which will uh, help people to know how are we supposed to deliver narrative visually through right. the help of uh, through the help of how levels are done and how to inform an emotion just with how the color spaces, how the geometry is, how the negative space are, right, uh, etc. and so forth. So, it's about telling a story or setting a tone with the help of level design. and we'll be discussing about the same in this deep dive deep dive for level design right and then comes gameplay design so this the term sounds a bit tricky right game design gameplay design what it means so by gameplay what i mean is you are role playing as a character in the game right so the very crucial element of narrative design is you have to and questionably feel like the protagonist right you are figuratively in their shoes right yep so gameplay design is that aspect wherein we design the mechanics and systems for the protagonist in a way that you get to feel via interaction that you are that character like when you play batman arkham there might be so many instances where you felt like you're batman right mm -hmm. that right. is because the way the mechanics are designed from the ground up it lets you play the game in ways that makes you feel okay i feel like i am batman i am genius mm -hmm. i am a strategist so we'll be discussing those things in game gameplay design deep dive how do we get to figuratively put the player in the shoes of the protagonist right and then comes technical design so what is technical design so a lot of people think anything that is technical falls into the hands of programmers right mm -hmm. but what happens is as game designers we are supposed to give a blueprint to right. the programmers and then they will start doing their work right so what we mean by technical design over here is i'll break it down into two two deep dives the first is camera and then comes the ai or the npc right right so just like how cinematography is like a very important aspect of delivering stories in the medium of cinema even in games it forms a very important role like for example if it's a third person camera or it's a first person camera why do we specifically pick that sort of a camera for this particular game how close or far should be should the camera be from the character like for example in god of war the camera is very close mm -hmm. but then in a game like um batman arkham the camera is very pulled back right like why do we take these specific choices what is the storytelling reason or the narrative reason behind picking the kind of camera that we do right. like near automata though in that game you can control the camera fully mm -hmm. there are some instances where the camera is locked to a particular frame because they want to they want you to feel a certain way yes exactly so how do we use this tool of lighting and camera to stage the action in a way that it emotes an emotion in a way it emotes attention 
So those sort of things we need to break down as a designer and give a blueprint to programmers so that they'll be like, huh, okay, so this is how we need with the camera. So I can set the cameras in this way. Right. And then they will give us tools to kind of tweak the camera in the front end without the need of programming it. Hmm. And then comes the probably the most challenging aspect, the NPCs and the AI. And this is challenging because this is where you would get to break or make the immersion of the game world. Right. So this is where we will try to form AI in a way. So how do we form the AI behaviors is very simple. Um, it is through something that we call behavior sheets. Uh, we just took to calling it behavior sheets in outlay games. What it basically means is it's like a very extensive uh, line graph, which denotes if they do this, what is the corresponding behavior? Right. And if that doesn't work, what do they do next as a player, as a character behavior? So it's just like, a, I wouldn't say it's like a behavior tree. Behavior tree is very different. This is more like a behavior chart, where right. we tell this is how a character is supposed to behave, behave in all these instances. Right. And when the variables change, how are they supposed to adapt and behave in a different way? Right. And this we would do with context of how this character is written in the story. Right. So that we don't get to break their characterization. Right. Right. So these are some of the ways in which we do narrative design. And all of this I'll be covering in depth in uh, the masterclass that uh, I would be uh, delivering at Gamer to Maker. Awesome. Fantastic. This is going to be so awesome. I think you can stop sharing your screen now. All right. All right, guys. So that's all we have time for today. So also, by the way, Harish is also going to be teaching you how to build a portfolio, right? It's, it's, it's one thing to actually have this stuff, do this stuff, know this stuff, but how do you actually build it in your portfolio? How do you let game studios know that is also something that you're going to be learning in this masterclass. Now, this masterclass is going to be starting in, I think, probably the last week of October 2022. And um, it's going to be 10 masterclasses uh, weekly. It's going to be a series of masterclasses because obviously this is a huge topic, right? So if you're interested, you can DM me, uh, you know, write a comment on this. I'll give you more information. And to sign up for the masterclass, the link is actually in the description of this video. So thank you so much, Harish. That was absolutely no fantastic. I know, I feel like in these 20 minutes, I know so much more about a game and narrative design. And I'm really, really looking forward to the masterclass. So thank you so yeah. much. And we will see you soon in Gamer to Maker delivering this awesome, Definitely. awesome topic. Looking Very excited to, to engage with your students. Yes. All right. Thank you so much, Harish. Have a great day. Thanks for being here.